I already see a Ling band there, so let's check out the bands. Blacklist International, they are first oh. pick. They're not changing the bands, man. They're not no. changing the bands. They don't need to. Again, they don't really need to adapt even. Even when the Claude is up for grabs, they smash the Claude. It's just they got to pay attention to that bottom side a bit more. No Varia ban here? Ooh, I mean, if they don't if they don't ban in the Varia, it is going to be very sketchy. But I think with the Diggy out, they can actually just let the Devaria go. That was the uh, plan initially for Todak. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Generally, definitely possible. But keep in mind, Todak is going to be back onto this awards that second pick with Blacklist International on that first pick. So generally, that should be the, the case here. Stars. There we go. Novaria is going to get taken out. Now forced to play standard. But that means that Valentina is open. Do they want to take it first pick, though? Uh, right? I mean, here's the thing. Valentina is strong. Eve is strong. I kind of feel like for Blacklist International, they're definitely looking at both heroes. Never mind, Psycho Fredrin is here. Yeah, with well, the Fredrin's so good. Shout out to RSG as well because I was hanging out with them and they gave me that term. But I kind of feel like now it's sticking. Now I think we're just going to call it the Psycho Fredrin. Oh, for sure. A hundred percent. When you think Fredrin is gone, Psycho Fredrin is just looking back at you like, say what now? Say that again, one more time? I got my retro up, by the way. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Toda, I I'm... Do they want to go for what they went for in game number one? Just instantly with the Akai Arlet here? I kind of feel like Claude would be okay. <laughs> Just take it now before it gets picked up. Right? They have last pick in the first phase. So I think they want to utilize that to actually... You give know, Claude? Give, maybe pick Claude, right? Again, Blacklist International can simply just pick up that Claude away. But Todok, I don't think they want to... They, do they want to be that one-dimensional? Just go for the Claude? <laughs> no. Vardis and Valentina. Oh. Very interesting, yeah. This is a rather interesting pick here because we do have 50% current, 50% win rate on this Mardis, but it's also a considerable flex pick for both Momo as well as Rival. It can go into the EXP and as well as that jungle position, and I think for Momo, he's definitely comfortable with it. We've seen Fredrin openers happen before in MPL MY. They played against it many, many times, and even during the C games as well, we did see a couple of people make that same attempt to snowball Mardis from the EXP lane. I'm gonna do you one better. Maybe Chiku guys. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I mean, like, <laughs> don't, don't. are you really going to tell me there's no world that Chiku guys doesn't use the mark this gold league? Oh, oh, man. He probably does somewhere in his ranked games, but maybe for now it might be a bit too crazy. We'll have to see what Black International go for first. And they go for the Minotaur and the Yi. So with a few heroes banned away, with the SS and Diggy banned away, it's, I guess, Venus's third most comfortable pick. It is going to be the Minotaur, which is, again, very uncharacteristic because we've never really seen Venus on a full initiation hero. Thing is, Blacklist don't have dive. <laughs> and right now, Todok. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Chikulaga, and they're picking it up, Ilda, again! Alright, Chikulaga, Chiku guys has dealt 100% of Todok's turret damage with a total of 20,068 damage to turrets last game. 100%. Oh you know my what? goodness. This is a different kind of funneling. Yeah. That is amazing. I've never seen a turret funnel before, but I, I guess we've seen it now. I think Chiku told the team, you guys just clear the minions. Yeah. Don't even distract the Distract them. Destroy your own body for me. <laughs> this is some this is some sadistic. This is some sadistic. He sounds like a way play. He kind of sounds like a dictator. <laughs> oh. I mean, anything for the win, right? Anything for the win. Anything at all costs. All right, let's see what the second phase is going to, to be here. Because again, one, one. the fact is that Todok is going in blind with this Hilda, right? They, they have Claude something then, right? in the mind. Oh, wait, now that I think about it, at the very least, I know that Hilda is able to cancel out a decent amount of abilities, and I think it might be uh, applicable to Minotaur in this case. Mm. I Actually, I haven't seen a lot of that interaction, so that is very interesting to see here in-game. Right now, as we're talking about the claw band, even the production is like, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's. Even reset. they can't handle the. Traps. Yeah, even they is like, come on, it has to be a claw, right? <laughs> if it's not, then disrespect. I, I don't know. I feel like again, Todok might just be trying to force <laughs> that Mutrix out, and yeah, it's not gonna be. I don't think Claude sounds like that. So Blacklist or National oh. did not go for the Claude ban here. That sounds like a carry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like a carry. Yeah. All right, so get rid of the carry. I mean, it makes sense, right? I mean, carry is the obvious counter pick to basically all tanks in this game, and you've got two of the beefiest ones right in the first two picks for Blacklist International. We come back over time to Todak's side, and no it's going to be the Beatrix no band. This time, we are seeing some form of adjustment to the second phase. Do they want to pull off the Natan again? There's no dive technically from Blacklist International right now, and they and for Todak, look, look, they have two physical damage dealers. They're setting up for something magic, I believe. 
Lunox? Ooh. Ooh, Lunox Jungle. That is very interesting, man. Lunox Jungle. I, I like. Mean, I like how you say Lunox Jungle instantly when it's when it comes to Todok. It's you know they made it. They made it a signature it's, it's, for it's a reason. Very, it's very interesting. Chiku guys was the one that used the Lunox Jungle, but it's kind of like one of the process of interviews. Like, yo, you want to enter Todok rival? <laughs> can you use the Lunox Jungle? <laughs> and he's like, I can try. Jiku made sure that he could use it. Mm -hmm. Got the job. Got the job for sure. Lapu, no claw, man. So the claw might just come through here. But if they do go for the claw, Tornok are going to be severely um, dependent on physical damage right now. Yeah, I agree with you here. I think for, even for Blacklist International, they actually respect the fact that anti-CC is going to be a little bit of an issue. So getting rid of the Lapu is always going to be great. We know that Valentina is susceptible to CC, but if you steal the real-world manipulation, that opens up a couple of options. But let's not forget, the Minoan Fury can also be stolen at the same time. Do they want to go for Joy right now, is my question, right? Good dive up against Blacklist International, good mobility to try to face off against the Minotaur as well, and has a bit of anti-CC within her kit. And deny. And deny. And uh, magic damage. I don't know. I, I feel like even Arlet might actually be a little bit more suitable in these particular cases. At least with the final slash, you can start denying abilities. No, nope. yo. You say Joy? What did you say, Joy? You know Arlet? what? Yeah. You know what? I'm just, I'm just trash. You let's know? just throw all of <laughs> We're the. We're bad at the game. I'm all terrible. the data we have here. Yeah. Let's just throw it out. I mean, we why do we it. even have a data? Right. For Todok. You know what? Production has been keeping us up to date with all the stats, but even then, it's still tough to predict what's going to be happening in this matchup. Blacklist International start things off in the second phase with the Arlet for themselves, and I think that's great, especially when you're up against a Harith. It's always good to be able to kind of lock him down just for a couple of seconds. Here's the thing. It, it kind of shows to me that this time, Todak, they want to fight. Mm -hmm. Looking at the draft right now, they're like, yeah, they just are. now we gave you guys a lot of room. This time, not going to happen. Oh, and even Blacklist want to fight too. Locking in the Brody into this matchup. I'm liking it. This is going to be a high body count game. Oh, Toda can just go for something like a Terizla now in the XP lane. Put the Martis in the jungle, and the Terizla is going to have a lot to say. Anti-CC, once again, in the penalty zone, is a very good counter onto the Brody early to mid when he doesn't have enough attack speed to get those basic attacks off because it cancels it all the time. Yep or the Lunox Jungle. <laughs> so I like how we default to <laughs> Lunox Jungle. <laughs> because we're talking, we're talking about, if we're talking about anti-CC, we have to talk about iframes, right? They basically come hand in hand to each other. And there's not a lot of heroes that do that. Oh, Yu Zong. Okay, you know what? I you guess guys are bad about a game. We're terrible. We're terrible. None of our predictions correct here. None of our calls. To be, fair, to be fair, can, can people really blame us? Is I mean, it really our fault? It's I Todok's mean, fault, I think, more than us, right? I don't know. LaFell was able to call it in game number two how this game would eventually end, so... But he's I'm, Malaysian. No, I'm, I'm calling for this game. What it's going to be a brawl. To be, man? <laughs> I'm calling this game a brawl, man. Calling it a brawl? Once Chiku has two items on the Harif, it's all looking for blood. All right, Clippers, hold him accountable for it. Let's find out. Is he going to get? Is he going to be two for two here? He's 1-0 currently. And I'm expecting everybody to show up in the middle lane and start battling it out. The crowd's ready. You can see him, man. They are ready for this third game of the series. We expected anticlimactic after game number one, after the stomp of game number two. But Todok somehow, some way, were able to shift the tides. And now we're here, ladies and gentlemen. Game number three for the first seed. It's Group D. This is going to be the last match here of the group, out sta Welcome group stage before we move into the knockouts. Blacklist on the blue side with Todak on the red side. Don't go in, Yooms. Just, just relax. Like, it's, it's the Yooms. <laughs> Yooms! He's, He's giving tips. Oh, forcing a red tree early on. Yooms dealing pretty good damage, but this is the problem, I believe. Up against a Fredrin. Oh, no, no, no. Yooms have, this time he's actually baited out the red tree, so he can continue to do what he wanted to do in game number one. Right now, honestly, I kind of feel like all he's trying to achieve is slow everyone down. But while we're having this time, we're seeing Yooms take a beating, being a, a bit masochistic here. I'm actually looking at Moon for him to kind of like set the tempo for the team because there's a lot of great alls that he can take. And if he takes a good one and actually has a good start to the fight, then it's going to be very good for Todak. I totally agree with you here, but also notice that Yooms decided to go for Concussive Blast as well mm -hmm. as taking the Flicker rather than going for the Sprint. So it's not like he can get out of these really, really tight situations and buy like a whole bunch of time. He's just waiting for these critical moments.
three man though up top already. Chiku guy is going to be pressured here, forced to recall pretty early on, and he will just respect that. He knows that he can't go for that gold minion anyways, unless he wants to get threatened here. But for the in-game emblems, anything in particular to note? Out. No, because I don't think that's the mage emblem for uh, Chiku guy. If I'm not mistaken. No. So it's alright. Alright, right, it's okay. It's alright for now. It's alright for now. But look at the bottom side, right? Just a lot of pressure towards Edward. Edward so far still doing quite okay. So for both teams, it looks like they're showing their face and then they're like, can we do this? No, we cannot. So at least for both teams, they're, they're being respectful. Not a lot of crazy kills in the uh, early stages of the fight. For now, Chiku guys as well as Ao look like they're doing quite even, though I would say Chiku guys is trading a little bit more HP. Now Black Dragon form from Momo looking for Wise. He found Wise in the bush right now. He does have the Petrify. Wise gonna be able to dash away. Minion Fury walking two members up. Now another knock up, but Momo finds the Petrify now onto Wise. The turtle's still up. The overall manipulation dealing a whole lot of damage, but the sustain is actually there. And first blood goes to rival. He's looking for more. Decimation is on. But Wise is able to sustain back up with the Appraiser's Wrath. Young with the flicker out with a basic oh! attack. Fade away from Yue, finds the double. Todok once again will lose in the early game with Wise having more pressure on the turtle, but they know this information. No retribution on Wise. Can Moon look for the steal? He cannot. Wise gets it. Venus look for, looking for the knockup. Moon knocked up, forced to flicker out. Mm, honestly, super close coming in from Yue. He could have survived if he was able just to get his foot, just one more pixel to touch that brush, and Barak is passive. Once again, I mean, the idea was definitely there, right? Momo wanted to jump its back, hopefully trying to slow down Yue and maybe put them low enough for Rival to kind of finish them off one by one. Another thing is, he almost hit level 4. Mm -hmm. If he hit that level 4, he would have survived. And now, oh my Venus sees him as well as Moon. So far, this Minotaur is getting punished quite a lot, but so far, it is going to be quite okay. Even the power of Wildest committed, but look at this. Why is Psycho Fredrin locking him down? Minion and Fury to take him out. Real world manipulation as well. Put all the ults and the kitchen sink down below. Solo oh. kill from Owl. Torn apart memory. Oh, that's not what you want to see. That's not what you want to see. Blunder after blunder coming out for the side of Tordog. But this could be a repeat of game number two. Who knows? Tough to say. But you're going to have to keep your hopes up. So far, so good for Blacklist International, right? You can definitely tell by their movements. They're not looking for these big invades. They're just making sure that the river line is going to be safe. Oh, what's going on in the mid lane? Moon is going on in the mid lane. He's getting completely ganked and shut down this game. Zero, two, and one. Rival forced to just soak in all the mini waves in the mid lane. And Todok are just falling behind. You guys, now with Zaman Force, it might be another solo kill as the Tornapart memory comes through. Oh my god! So much damage wise. He's looking for the appraiser's wrath stacks. Rival and Yums are there to back him up. We'll give him enough space to clear out the mini waves, but so far. Blacklist, 3,000 gold lead already. Okay, guys, you know, I said it's going to be a bloodbath. I say it's going to be a brawl. Not like this. You know, I, I, I thought it'd be a little bit more even for now. Six kills to one. Lota has not been doing quite good in this trade. And oh. Yumes, he's really just tanking everyone. He's trying to delay. I don't know what's going on here. I think he's trying to bait the abilities, and he can't do that. Momo finds a petrified the Furious Die, but Venus is still able to escape from Decimation. Now Moon stealing wave the Munit Fury. Momo with a Black Dragon form will fall. Yue picks up a double. The Appraiser's Wrath comes through. Blacklist have withstood the chaos and they're able to punish. Beautifully played by Blacklist. They're making sure that their low members flicker out right at the very end while the rest of the members try and body block Rival from getting even remotely close. Keep in mind, the Decimation has a limited range. It's not very, very long. And more importantly, there is a slight channel time. So if timed right, he can technically, it's, it's a bit of a gamble, right? Rival could technically follow them along that flicker. But if done early, you won't have the space and time. Dota's got to slow down a bit, uh -huh. get some farm, get equal levels, because even looking at levels here, you guys about to hit level 7, but Owl is already level 7. Yooms keeps on going on, and look, he's taking way too much damage, man. Forced to commit the flicker here early again, fifth minute in the game. But it does give some more space for Chiku, guys. He didn't know a lot of members were down there. Now they can actually slow the tempo down. But with a 5,000 gold lead, with a turret already taken on this Brody, remember, this is Owl on the Brody. He understands completely how to snowball in this game by getting these turrets, and Blacklist seem to understand that as well. They're already rotating him down below. If this turret falls, that's so much map pressure that Blacklist can use to actually even invade in the enemy jungle. Look, right now I'm looking level difference so much. Even Venus and Yumes, there's a level difference here. So Toda again, 
they're going for my Venus. I don't think that's a very great idea, especially Chiku guys is actually being denied a lot of the minions, and now Moon has to flicker away, but Edward is there. Final slash. Yep. Moon again, zero, three, and one now counting. Blacklist International have completely read out what Tonak wants to go for. Even Momo here in the mid lane forced to again soak in those minions, and yes, Blacklist are playing the Siege perfectly with the Brody, playing towards the Brody, giving him space, and now with this big snowball, I can only imagine what one torn apart memory can do to the rest of the team. Yeah, it's going to absolutely shred here, but Blacklist International at least have identified the movements coming in from Todar. Because again, even if you guys were to suppose go to that top side, they know for a fact that Momo is covering, and especially these big choke points, to feed that information. It, it is a good way to kind of cover for Chiku, but it's not the greatest for anybody walking back into the mid lane. That's why Momo was such a prime target. It's funnel. They're doing a funnel right now. Chiku is going to be on the purple buff. Even Oh. Very early in the seventh minute of the game, despite Rival already being behind, he's still trying to go for that. Now, what does this mean? This means, again, you gotta slow things down because you're really looking for Chiku guys to carry the game. But the thing is, it's kind of not great just because Athena Shield as well as Radiant Armor are a thing. I don't know. In this kind of situation, Toda might still be able to win the fight, but they really gotta make sure that. They, they, they put into consideration the, the level difference. Edward's level 10, Momo is oh. level 9. Unless they catch Blacklist slipping, it's uh, it's going to be very difficult. The split Blacklist off, Edward could read on Rival, just bringing him back right now as the turtle will actually be ignored. They want to go for the first Lord right now, understanding that Tiku has been doing the same thing. He's just been constantly splitting, so they don't actually want to go for the turtle. They're just going to go for the Lord that has just spawned. Mm -mm. And more importantly, as time goes on, rather than looking for these neutral objectives, actually, Blacklist looking for these kills might be very, very worthwhile, right? Because at the end of the day, as much as Chiku wants to go and split push into the side, if he doesn't reveal himself and more so, if the housekeeping has been done right, taking out three, arguably the most ideal situation for members from the side of Todai, making it obsolete for you to try to go for these back doors. Right now, looking at the situation, I'm, I don't always see Harif split pushing, so we'll have to see if Chiku is able to use that well. The Lord is... Blacklist, they're, 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 they're thinking about it, but at this point of time, it kind of feels like maybe not too worth it, but no, they are starting the Lord right now. And look at Todak's positioning. It doesn't look like it is going to be a good position for them to actually fight this. I don't even think they should contest at this point, right? I mean, 6,000 gold lead. Uh, game number two, they try to contest with a 6,000 gold lead and they ended up just having to back away and that's exactly what they do right now. They try to go for a turret down below, putting up the map just like Lefel said in game number two, but now the old world of ablation, that immobility field as well. Momo forces the Black Dragon Forms, they go for the defense here in the mid lane. Meanwhile, Chiku in the bottom lane right there, might be forced into a 1v1. Turn up our memory though from Owl. Beautifully placed, the fadeaway, and yes, two guys takes the fight, has to purify now with the Zaman Force as well, but cannot win in the 1v1 against Edward. Oh! Unless Chiku in the shielding! Oh, so close, close so close, but Agent Zero takes the dub. Oh my goodness, that was way too close for comfort. One single dodge made such a difference to not get the reset on the demo, uh, on the demon marks now. But the defense, it's going to be rather weak without Chiku. And more importantly, when it comes down to wave clear overall, even Moon is significantly behind. He's not be, he's not strong enough to one shot these waves by himself. I got to I got to say that's the level difference because again, one level difference. If they were equal levels, Chiku might have won that. I think it's also just the Purify. I really wonder why Chiku didn't utilize the Purify there in the skirmish to try to, you know, cancel out some of these stuns coming in. I think it was already too late, right? He was already hit by the big ticket items. He was hit by the final slash. Wait, hold on. Rival brought back by the team by the final slash right there, but the real world manipulation does give Tonok a lot more to say when it comes to these defenses high ground. So they're going to be able to defend for now only the two phase turrets or two tier two turrets on the side getting picked off. Okay. Things have been going on pretty okay for now for Blacklist International. 9.2, they need to make sure that there's no holes in their attack. No opportunities for Tordak to come back. Final Slash again, bringing Rival back. That's a lot of resources committed with the Minion Fury as well. With the Flicker inside, Chiku is holding on to that beautiful And look at Wise! 
with the Abrazor's Wrath, is able to find a kill back. First thing, Chiku, guys. Edward, final slash. Again, Moon brought back to the team. One more hit, you and finds it. Owl takes down the top side. Four members down, make it five. It's a wipeout from Blacklist International, and they do it quicker, faster, more efficiently this time. Woo! 11 minutes and 12 seconds. 11 minutes and 12 seconds is all they need. Congratulations to the agents. Blacklist International will be first seed coming out of their group, and unfortunately for Todok fans, they will just they won't get knocked out, but taking the second seed means they're less likely to